I'd like to just by way of review, last week we had the introductory, introductory sessions in the online PBLL Institute. You found out about project design elements. You found out about adapting gold standard project-based learning to the language education context. And then Sharice Montgomery helped you generate some project ideas. As a reminder, we need to hear from you in the apply section of module one. Uh, we want three project ideas from you to be submitted through a job form. This is a required item to be badged in this institute. All right, and today we're going to hear from Liliana Lopez, who is an experienced practitioner of project-based language learning. She's going to be talking about evaluating a project idea and engaging students in project development using this device we call the product square. After Liliana presents, we're going to hear from two other PBLL practitioners uh, about how they used the product square to sharpen their product, their project ideas. And the final session today will introduce you to the concept of, of integrating pragmatics in your planning for uh, a project. Uh, so it's an introductory session about pragmatics, appropriate use of language in the real world. And with that, I'd like to welcome Liliana Lopez uh, from the Fairlawn, New Jersey Board of Education to talk about the product square. Go ahead, Liliana. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'm Liliana Lopez, and I'm currently a public school district supervisor of world languages, English language learners, and music in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Uh, before leaving the classroom, I was a Spanish teacher for 12 years, and I had the opportunity to bring PBL to my classroom and to my students. It transformed my teaching because it provided students opportunity, opportunities to authentically engage with target language speakers and also have student, and also have student mm -hmm. uh, become passionate learners of a language. Um, thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm excited to share what I've learned with you and um, I look forward to learning from you in this PBL journey. In the next 20 minutes, I will share useful resources to inspire project ideas and explain what it takes for a project to be authentic. I will also share with you a useful tool developed during one of the past PBLL institutes uh, to help assess our projects or participant projects. Um, you will also be able to answer the following questions uh, by the end of this webinar. What is a product square? How does a product square help? Examine the challenging problem or question in your project. Make sure the public product you are planning has a real impact and significance for an authentic audience and check that your project will inspire a need to know among our students. I really love to hear Steven say that um, you're right now we're um, thinking about project ideas and I wanted to start off there um, and just to help you in supporting sometimes um, getting um, project ideas it takes it's like where do you start so I just um, want to share a couple of ideas um, you can really get inspiration from anywhere. Um, in 2014, um, at the ACFL convention, Annie Griffith shared her images during a keynote speech at ACFL, where she spoke about water issues, education issues, gender issues that were highlighted um, through her photography. Here we see real world issues. What are the real world products that students can create to address these issues? Let's take a look at two other sources. The IB programs, the International Baccalaureate Organization has six themes that we can use to also like as a source of inspiration. So the global focus on these themes are just a really great starting point to help us think about our authenticity and our PBLL project. Another useful resource to kind of start thinking about project ideas um, is um, the AP College Board themes for world languages, which provides us various categories to think about authentic problems, challenges, and issues. Think about your community. Do these issues uh, exist in your community? Are there target language speakers in your community that can help support 
um, really educating our students on these issues as well. If we take a look at each of these categories, consider diversity or economic issues in your community, ethical questions in recent world events, and any other themes here present that students would easily be engaged to learn more about. Do not be afraid to survey students and to get to know what they feel are interesting themes. What is so exciting about PBLL is that the teacher and the students go through an amazing learning process. Um, for our first PBLL Institute, we had participants start with their big ideas. Um, and as one of the facilitators at the Institute, I, as well as, well as my colleagues at the NFLRC, we were reviewing project outlines to provide formative feedback. We noticed that the project seemed to be either entirely off track or not grounded in the gold standard PBL design element. We teased out similar shortcomings in many of the projects and made some general generalizations. We generalized that novice PBLL teachers struggle with making projects authentic. We hypothesized that if they could see the relationship between the project, the driving question, the purpose, the audience and the student product that they could increase the relevance, rigor and authenticity of their projects. And voila, this tool was born, the product square. Oops, okay. However, PBLL consists of reflection, feedback for both teacher and students, and always this idea of constantly improving the learning process. As part of this process, the NFLRC has revised the product square modeling best practices in PBLL. I'm really excited to share with you this revised student uh, product square. The product square now includes these elements, the problem or question or challenge, um, the audience, and the public product, the authentic real world purpose, and community partners. This is a product square that we will use to assess our projects and help us ask ourselves, are our projects grounded in gold standard PBL design elements? Have a look at the questions we want teachers to reflect on. We wanted teachers to ask themselves, is my project meaningful and does it serve a real purpose? Is it what the students, is what the students create appropriate for the authentic audience of the project? Will it meet their learning needs and answer or address the student challenge? Do I have the right audience and community partners? And also finally, like why would our learners care about this project? How is this project meaningful, a meaningful experience for them? Will this product afford learners the opportunity to demonstrate their language skills, intercultural competence, understanding of content and 21st century skills, success skills? So let's dig into some of these issues that you might confront in a project that would lead you to um, need this tool. Much of what I mentioned relates to authenticity. Authenticity is a defining characteristic of PBLL because it is especially important in the world language context. Languages live and breathe. They are real tools used to do real things. So when we are helping our learners with a new language, we can go beyond the language forms and functions to help them develop an authentic understanding of the world by having them use the language in a real way, in an authentic way. What do we mean by authentic? Let's take a look at the criteria that makes projects authentic. 
I'm going to ask you to recall the gold standard PBL rubric that was previously shared um, by the Bunk Institute of Education. I'm going to ask you to look at the right hand column. The project has an authentic context, involves real world tasks and quality standards, makes a real impact on the world, and or speaks to students' personal concerns, interests, or identities. Authentic projects meet a real need in the world beyond the classroom or the products students create, or the products students create are used by real people. They focus on a problem or an issue or a topic that is relevant to our students' lives or on a problem or issue that is actually being faced by adults in the world. Students will soon enter. An authentic project could set up a scenario or a simulation that is realistic, even if it is fictitious. Authentic projects involve tools, tasks, or processes used by adults in real settings and by professionals in the workplace. Keep these criteria in mind as we begin to view various projects that are enhanced by the product square. There are many blogs you can read on making student products authentic. And if you see down below here, you will, you will see links to the blogs. We're sharing this link with you here. In particular, this blog in which John Larmer from the Buck Institute of Education shares his thoughts on what it takes for a project to be authentic is it's really particularly interesting for novice PBL practitioners. He explains and describes to us a sliding scale of authenticity. Depending on where you are in your educational setting and your PBL journey, you might want to simu simulate work done in the real world. If you take a look there in the middle row, Somewhat authentic means that students are doing work that simulates what happens in the world outside of school. In a project that is somewhat authentic, students could play the role of food critics, architects, nutritionists, or website designers who are placed in a scenario that reflects what might actually occur in the real world. Or students could create products that are the kind of products people use. In the world language classroom, we encourage you to find a true use for student work, but we recognize this cannot always be the case. We also want to design projects where students will do work that is real to them or the work has a direct impact on their lives. The real world, as John notes, could still be school, which is a very real place for students. In these projects, students might advocate for a cause, take an action to improve their community, perform a service for someone, etc. We can ask ourselves, what do real people do on the job and what are the corresponding products they create in the workplace? Consider the professionals we interact with on a needs or daily basis. Think of how their profession relates to authentic tasks and problems. For example, a chef is not going to prepare a brochure for his food patrons, but rather plan menus, present a meal, a writer would write a screenplay for a director. An architect makes plans for a client. A healthcare worker gives medical advice to patients. Citizens would write blogs to the general media or to mobilize peers or community members. A consultant gives advice on a specialized topic to a very specialized audience. I hope you're beginning to see the connection between the product that students create and the purpose that it serves for an authentic audience. At the following link, there is a list of authentic products that you may find useful when designing your project. It's also really important to consider the proficiency level of your students in PBLL. 
This, is a, this tool is used in the resources link we shared. A novice learner might make a list or draw a map, while an advanced learner might give a speech or write a blog post. Please consider viewing this resource in the link previously shared. The biggest part now is when brainstorming our project ideas, let's focus on our world and our students in our and their world. Let's first begin by thinking about the challenges, the issues and the problems that are relevant to their lives. What issues are being faced by adults in the world that matter to students? Let's take a look at how now our new revised product square um, helps address issues um, within our projects um, as we now have a big idea. The product square helps project designers align the purpose of the project to both the product and the problem, the question or the challenge. It also helps ensure that the product created by the student demonstrates their learning and answers or solves the issue. In turn, the product would have to be appropriate for the audience. That's why now they're grouped together in the product and public audience um, block. Finally, the product square helps ground our work by having us design a project to support student interests and ensure we answer the question, why would learners care about this project? Here's an example where the inspiration for uh, this PBLL idea actually came from a high school Spanish level two classroom, an actual level two book. Um, the whole chapter for level two is, was, was um, theme was technology. Here is a pro project idea. Students host an open house to present how to's on technology for parents in the community. Let's, let's use our product square to support our project design of this technology example. Here is a completed square. Taking the idea from this chapter two technology um, in the, from the book. Here's a completed square. How do we know we are on the right track? Each square is completed and relates to the question, how can technology help my community? What, does a technology night address the question? Would the audience care for the technology night? Does it support a solution to a real issue? Here is another example of a project idea. Um, and this is a great example of where a project started. So this, we're gonna walk you through this, kind of where this idea started and where it is today. The initial idea was to sharing, was about sharing leisure activities in Hawaii with the Spanish speaking world through a media presentation. It was, it was definitely a great starting idea. However, after using the product square, let's see how the project was revised. So we're gonna start off by writing down the question, how do my leisure activities compare to students in Barcelona? Is there a real purpose for this project? There really doesn't appear to be at the beginning, um, but let's look at the student product.
the idea was to create a multimedia uh, presentation. But who would this presentation be for? Let's add, how about Spanish speaking travelers thinking about going to Hawaii? Let's continue. How about Spanish speaking travelers thinking about going to Hawaii? Okay, so what would the purpose of educating Spanish travelers about leisure activities what would be the purpose of educating Spanish travelers about leisure activities on the big island? Let's talk about promoting tourism. Now that we've figured out an authentic real world purpose, let's consider changing um, our problem, question, or challenge. How can we educate and encourage Spanish speakers to visit the big islands of Hawaii? Right, so now we're promoting tourism. It's connected to the question. Our audience would care about, um, our, our Spanish speaking travelers would really care about our uh, prod product, which is our multimedia presentation. Let's take a look at what this final, uh, the final copy of this product square. The process of using the product square supported the teacher to confirm his audience would be Spanish speaking tourists and students who will promote tourism for the island. The teacher also discussed how specific Spanish tourists could be targeted to specific regions or countries so students would have to ensure their product was culturally re relevant to the specific Spanish speaking tourist group. Perhaps tourists from a landlocked country such as Bolivia or Paraguay would have different leisure activities um, compared to uh, Chile or Argentina, Chilean or Argentinian tourists. Also, please look at the final review. Why do learners care? This is an important question upon which you should reflect as you design your project. Let me walk through another example. The project idea started off with creating a campaign to promote healthy eating and fitness within the community. As we can see, the product or products here are an app or a public service announcement or a website or a weekly health plan. These products align with the purpose because the project's purpose is to raise awareness about healthy living. The problem the problem, question, or challenge aligns with the product because the products allow for students to demonstrate their learning and answer the question, how can we promote a healthy lifestyle within our community? And there is an authentic need for this project in the community. Finally, we think learners would care because they like helping others and are interested in health and fitness. One more example, student, the uh, big idea was students write restaurant reviews for restaurants in the local community um, and create a web page to share them with the community. Please go ahead and read through this on your own. Moving through the different boxes to see the connections between, between them.
please use this tool, the product square, as you design your own project. Build authenticity in projects. Building authenticity in projects provides students an opportunity to become empowered to affect change in their communities and the world around them. In closing, we really want our students to solve real problems in the classroom so they can become citizens who can discuss, analyze, and solve authentic problems in their world. I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to share ideas with you. And please know I can be con contacted via Twitter or email.